Hello, just too good here, back to another review, and today we're reviewing another LEGO Marvel Super Heroes Age of Ultron set, and it is set number 76041, it's called the Hydra Fortress Smash, it has 405 pieces, 5 minifigures if you included the Hulk big fig, and it retails for $50 in the United States. I got this from my local Toys R Us because it is a Toys R Us exclusive in, in I think, around the world, and so the only place you can get it from is Toys R Us, the LEGO store, or LEGO shop at home. So now let's take a look at the minifigures. Alright, so here is the first minifigure we'll take a look at, Quicksilver, which is exclusive to the set, and he is definitely one of my favorites of this year because he looks fantastic. He has a simplistic design because of his lack of leg printing, but his torso print has this awesome shine to it on this nice blue kind of coloring, and it gives it a very cool looking uh, kind of torso right there. And also his back torso printing has some nice shine to it, which is really cool, and he does have a double side face with some great face printing. And the casting on his hair piece is so well done. I like the white kind of molding on that kind of swept hair. And I think it looks great and matches his appearance from the movie just fine. And you know what? Now that I finally have this minifigure, I can finally do this. Yes, looks perfect. All right, those are all the Age of Ultron Avengers. He's not his Nick Fury. But I guess he isn't really an Avenger. So ha ha ha. Or then the comic people are going to be like, oh no, he is. All right, whatever. Just, that's awesome. Look at that. That looks great. Wasn't that display awesome? Anyways, this is a Captain America minifigure included in the set. He isn't exclusive or anything because he also comes in the Quinjet set and his torso comes in the Helicarrier set. Um, but he does have that shield from last year in the Avengers Assemble sets based on the cartoon show. And he has some great printing all around. Very well done minifigure. And just compare him to the look of his 2012 Marvel Cinematic Universe version. And you can see how much of an improvement this one is. The one from 2012, which is this one right here, looked a little bit more simplistic on the head print. Um, but this one has all these multiple colors on the head print. And the shield for this one's lighter than the 2012 one, which is kind of an interesting choice. Uh, but now let's go on to the next minifigure. Here's Baron Von Strucker, and he is a fantastic minifigure. Again, a little bit simplistic on the leg print because there is none, but the torso really makes up for it, as does the face print, where it has a really cartoony expression that does match his appearance, I think, I believe, because we got to see how he appears in Age of Ultron. It, from what I think it would be, I think it does match his appearance, and you can see he does have this little gun right here, which is a nice little accessory. And this kind of nice, it looks like a sand blue kind of coloring on his torso all around and his legs. And that's it for this minifigure, and now let's go on to the next. And here is a Hydra, I guess, soldier, and he does come in another set, so he isn't even exclusive to this set, unfortunately. Uh, but he does have some nice printing all around his torso, and his face print is also very well done. But like I said, he does come in the $20 um, Hydra Showdown set, so he is in a much easier set to kind of get him in. But just compare him to one last year, which wasn't from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but from the Avengers Assemble cartoon. You can see how different these Hydra goons look from each other. Just kind of funny how you compare them side by side. That's it. Now let's go on to Hulk. And here is the Hulk. And this guy is not exclusive to the set because he also comes in the Hulk Buster Smash, uh, which is actually a cheaper way to get him, <laughs> which is kind of weird. But still, it's nice that they did include Hulk once again because he is such a great mini or big fig to get. Only thing is, you know, this one isn't really an exclusive version, which is a little bit lame on my watch. Would have been cool to maybe get him without this printing on his pants, unlike the one from the Hulk Buster or with a different facial expression. But nevertheless, you could see that printing on the pants is very detailed. I, I do kind of like how that came out. It is on purple pants which is kind of an interesting choice he does have printed toes this time around unlike the old marvel cinematic universe version from 2012 and his arms are made up of a few pieces because you have that little technic pin inside the actual arm piece then you have his palm which is one piece all together and his palm is something you could use to actually hold the minifigure so let's just take this hydra goon and kind of slip him slip him right there and you can see you could kind of hold him in his hands the Hulk, and then you could kind of just thrash him around. So that's kind of a cute play feature. And if you look to the back, not too much detailing there, but I love the new hair molding that they kind of use on this new Hulk. Um, it's interesting that they did kind of change up the mold because it seems like they're using a mold more similar to like the big figs from DC Universe this year, um, where the toenails aren't, you know, molded or anything. But if you compare it to the last Marvel Cinematic Universe Hulk, you can see this one looks a lot more realistic and more accurate to the movie. The old one had that little bright skin, which I don't know, um, kind of looks bad now in hindsight with this new updated version. Uh, but I think this one looks a little bit more closer to the, the one that wasn't from Marvel Cinematic Universe, but from the Avengers Assemble line last year, which has purple pants because, you know, the purple pants. 
Other than that, that's it for this. And now let's go on to the build itself. Here's the whole build together. You got this little vehicle for the Hydra henchman. And also you have this whole fortress build, which looking at the back, has not too much detail inside, but we'll get to all that later in the close-up. I just kind of wanted to give a quick look to this all. Now let's go on to this little vehicle right here. So here is the Hydra Henchman's vehicle. It's kind of like a little mini tank, and honestly, not really digging the look of this sucker. Yeah, um, <laughs> it reminds me a lot of the build from last year from that $20 Hydra set for Avengers Assemble. Uh, there's some cool parts to it, but for the most part, I think it's pretty weak, and it does take up the piece count for the set, in my opinion. But honestly, I don't really know how LEGO designs their sets, so I don't know if they're like, oh, well, this one is going to take up all the piece count so we can't make a bigger fortress. But uh, we'll get into all those flaws later, and let's just look at what's on the surface here. There's a few stickers. You got the little Hydra logo right there, 318 stickers on both sides. And then they have this little turret in the middle, which uh, kind of gives a little bit like a tank look, but then again, it doesn't really shoot anything besides it kind of launches this ball more than it shoots balls. <laughs> and uh, if you push down in this middle, that ball will go really far. So that's kind of a cool play feature for the kitties, but nothing too interesting to me. But what I do like is that inside, if you take off this part, which easily gets removed, you actually do have room for a minifigure. Now you would think maybe you could fit a few standing up in there, but no, it's really only one because you can't actually close it with a minifigure standing up. So we'll put this guy in here like this. And he fits in there quite snug and then you can just kind of cover it up back again. Uh, but I did want to take a little bit of a bigger look inside there because there are some little bit of flaws there. Really, it's weird that they have these open little holes right here and I wish they would have sealed that off so it would have looked a little bit more complete and more cool inside. And other than that, uh, they also do have that little sticker right there, which I guess looks all right. It's kind of like a little control panel sticker with some gauges or something like that. Um, so that's kind of interesting. But uh, the main play feature of this is really to destroy this with the Hulk. So what you do is you'll seal it up. And uh, there's all these cool little parts that you can launch. Basically, this front part right here, take the Hulk, get him to smash something, and... And this part kind of supposed to fly off, but it depends on how hard you kind of push down on it. And other than that, that's really it for the exploding play features of this build. And now let's go on to the actual fortress itself. Here is the Hydra Fortress, and we'll kind of take a look at the front before we take a look at the back. But let's start off all the way at the front. Here's the front of the builder, the bottom of the front. And it does look really cool. I do like the front altogether. I think it looks better than when looking from it in the back, which is extremely weak. But we'll get to that later. It does have a little bit of a darker look to it. You have this kind of dying shrubbery, it looks like, or just kind of dark, woodsy kind of a detailing here with a little bit of some black pieces for kind of the trunk. And then you got these nice red, dark red leaf pieces, which don't appear in too many sets and are always a pleasure to get. Also this dying shrubbery right here. And the main play feature with this front which does have a nice little no entry sticker, which I kind of got a little bit slanted, is you would have to kind of, I guess, smash it with the Hulk. But what you would do is instead of putting his arms right here because it's extremely hard to get and it won't really reach too much, just make him step on it. So this little edge right here, once you step on it, it makes that part blow up. And then once you step on this, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, there you go. It kind of blows up. So that's a fun little play feature. I do like those little exploding play features when it includes the Hulk. You know, it makes sense. So uh, that's cool. I also like this little detailing right here, which is a little bit of a minuscule detailing, but uh, it gives it more of an architectural look with this little Technic bowl right here um, that they use to kind of cap off this little jumper right there. So moving on to the back, uh, like I said, kind of weak in the inside because there's really not much going on for this $50 set. Uh, you do have the inside of the gate, which has nothing, and then you have this little part, which is pretty cool. Um, that does kind of hold Loki's uh, little staff right there, which is really, seems like the mission of this set is to retrieve Loki's staff. So it's kind of in this uh, little container right here, which if you pull this part up, it kind of flaps open like that. So you could easily take out the staff and wreak havoc or I don't even know if you're one of the heroes you would kind of I guess take it back and put it back to Avengers Tower which it also appears in that set so there you go some continuity and if you want to put it back up you could just kind of hold it right there and also there is this sticker right here so let's move on to the top. Moving on to the top part you do have this little turret for the Hydra henchman I guess or even Baron Von Strucker and it does spin around 360 degrees because it is on the little pin and it does have kind of a cool look to it. I like how they use these transparent blue tiles and just uh, kind of plates. 
And then look from the front. What you could do is just push down on these, and they are stud shooters, so you know they'll shoot to, shoot to studs quite well. But uh, the main play feature of this is actually in conjunction with the super jumper included in the set, where if you take off this part right here, and you kind of make it stand upright without it falling over, which constantly happens, so you'll have to kind of balance it a little bit like that. Then you take a minifigure with the super jumper, which uh, was right here. And what I did was I just put two studs, extra studs included in the set, so it doesn't damage the legs of the minifigure. Then you put uh, Captain America as it shows in the cover on that super jumper. You can just kind of, you'll have to be really good because this one's really high up. So um, let's see if we could do this. This one's going to take a lot of tries. Oh, finally, all right, that's good. And also the Super Jumper does come into play feature, um, as a play feature with the little staff as well, where if you hit this part with the Super Jumper, you could actually knock over, you know, the part that holds the staff, or would have hold the staff if I didn't take it out. And of course now I hit that. And you could just go like this, and it's supposed to hit over. But you get the point. Basically, the Super Jumper is used for many play features in here. And that's it for the build, and now let's go on to the box. And here's the front of the box, and the back. It includes two instruction booklets, which oddly enough, there's none for the comic. So the comic is not in this set, but uh, that's it for now, and let's go on to the final verdict. So overall, for the most part, I like this set, but uh, there, there is some glaring flaws with it. Uh, for example, the size of the set, I don't really feel like this is a good price for the set. I don't feel like I'm satisfied paying $50 for this. And really, that really comes down to the lack of the, or the, the facade of this kind of fortress right here. I wish it was a more expansive fortress. I wish there was more stuff going on. Sure, the front looks amazing. I think the front looks really, really good. But the inside, there's really that only one part to hold the staff, and that's it. I wish I would have expanded upon that and instead take out that crappy little vehicle right here. But, uh, you know, the vehicles are the ones that sell supposedly for Lego, so I can't really complain there. And even then, it's still 400 pieces or a little bit over 400 pieces, but like, I mean, 10 pieces uh, for $50. So they're still, they still could have easily added more stuff. And I mean, the Hulk comes in the Hulkbuster set and that has a pretty decent price per piece ratio. So yeah, that's how I feel. And I would give this set a B because honestly, the front does look great, there's some great pieces, and the minifigures are really kind of one of the best selections in this wave. You get two exclusive ones, you get the Hulk, which is a really popular character for those who didn't want to get the Hulkbuster, and also Captain America, which this is the cheapest way to get him by basically a $30. So that's all good, and you know, I do like those parts a lot, and really the Quicksilver and Baron Von Strucker are two excellent minifigures. But I just wish that the builds for the vehicle was a little bit better. And I wish it wasn't a facade of a build for the actual fortress. And I wish there was more stuff inside there or even take out the vehicle to add to the fortress. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. And I'll see you guys later.